Fame is proud to open its doors to James Hunt and to collect the award on his behalf. circumstances that surrounded it and the desperate lows that we went through before we realised we could survive and then we realised we had a good car and we realised we might be able to win the World Championship and, and I think it was that contrast that was so special and I think seeing the group of people that were there during November, December, January, February when none of them really knew what their future was but sticking together and, and working even harder than we thought possible to keep the, um, keep the hope going. And, uh, so that really is uh, the pinnacle of my career. So of course, uh, a very, very popular winner was your, was your old man. You sort of half expect to have award ceremonies like this. I used to turn up to me in shorts, t-shirts and barefoot. I was, I was thinking it might be a bit cold for that time. I think he was known to do that a few times, yeah. Certainly a bit cold today. And I think um, there's no way I would have tried it. I think only someone like him would get away with something like that. Everyone's got their own fond memories, but for you, I suppose, he was just simply Dad. How do you remember him? Yeah, exactly that. Um, obviously, he'd long retired from racing. Um, he was still doing the commentary and stuff. Um, so we went to the old Grand Prix, and um, you know, I have a few memories of sitting in the commentary box with him. Um, but other than that, you know, he was just any old normal dad, um, very loving, lots of fun, and uh, tried to bring my brother and I up in the best way possible. Uh, yeah, how would he have reacted to this honour? It is a great honour and, you know, he had many bestowed upon him. It's a huge honour um, and, you know, I'm sure he would have absolutely loved it. And, you know, for the family it's very, very special to see him, you know, being put up against some of these other great names. And, um, you know, it's lovely to be accepting the award on his behalf. Um, I'm just sorry that he's not, you know, here to accept it himself. 17 years of TT racing, 20 wins and I write that record, you know. Nearly 42. Uh, I look pretty average, but in the head I feel pretty good. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll carry on for one or two more years yet. Yeah. And uh, you know, I felt a bit nervous to be honest. I felt a little bit out of depth here. There's so many world champions on four wheels here, and I'm world champions on two wheels. And uh, you know, to see my name up there with the greats, it's just a massive honour. And uh, you know, I never ever thought I'd be still here for sure. And uh, it's fantastic to be in the, uh, the presence of a legend of those four titles. Looking back now, which of them gave you the most satisfaction? I always said uh, 86. Uh, excuse me, Patrick, <laughs> for 83, but only because in 86, uh, my car was maybe not the best. And uh, William's car with the Honda engine, with uh, Nigel and Nelson, they were better than us. And at the end of the day, we you know, kept going. Uh, we had a very fantastic Teamwork and uh, also with GK Rosberg helping me a lot during the year. At the end, when you achieve what you should not do, you know that was maybe the, the best. But at, at the end of the day, today the more you know you go on edge, you you never think too much about what is the best uh, championship or the best memory or whatever. It's it's the overall package. You know when I started. Uh, motor racing. I was not interested by motor racing at the beginning. I wanted to be a football player. And uh, I, it's only because I had a broken wrist that I started in go-karts, so in a way I was maybe lucky to, to have a broken wrist. My family was not interested at all by sport and uh, when you see what I was able to do and the achievement and uh, without having bad accident because we already we also lived uh, in a very dangerous area at the time. So that's what you, you get, maybe your best memory.